This is your Estuary Report. I'm Jerry Kay. A question being asked by many cities is how do we retrofit our streets to make them more welcoming and more environmentally sustainable? Today's story is about El Cerrito, California, and how they incorporated rain gardens into their sidewalks. A rain garden is a special kind of roadside garden because it has water treatment capacity built into it. My way of describing it is kind of letting soil do, do the work. They take the stormwater, clean it up, they deliver it to the bay, just like all stormwater does, but we've filtered out some pollutants along the way. So rather than picking up all the pollutants and giving them this clean, dirty, clean, smooth surface of asphalt and concrete just to directly deliver it to the bay before it's been cleaned, it gets filtered. Most people don't understand what they do because they're kind of a passive thing. And as the plants are now growing, they just look like little planter boxes along the street. So the true function of these are somewhat hidden from the average passerby. So it's really beginning to look at the services that were created in a natural system and how can you reintegrate those into an urban system while still meeting all of your other urban needs for walking and driving and building. Cities don't always understand all the opportunities they have. We're very busy. We have a lot of complex systems we have to deal with. So it, it takes a, it's a challenge just to have cities understand what these are, how they can work. When you take a parcel of land and you're building a new building, it's been required in the Bay Area to build stormwater treatment facilities. In other words, the rainwater that falls on your lot, that comes off your roof and out your rain gutter, they want to capture that and treat it. And it's passive treatment. They run it through a bioswale. It's a vegetated area that has a soil in it that allows the water to percolate through the soil quickly and especially constituted so it'll take the water rapidly and also help filter out pollutants. And then the plants are there to help consume those pollutants over time so that the soil doesn't have to be replaced. So that's already been in place for almost a decade now, but along roadways we really hadn't done it. San Pablo Avenue is the city's main street and it became clear that council really wanted to upgrade the whole avenue as a more welcoming, walkable place to stimulate economic development, improve quality of life. We were very fortunate that the business owners in town were supportive of this and thought that this would be an enhancement to the streetscape and to their businesses in particular. The streetscape project along San Pablo Avenue was a large undertaking that took several years to put together. We were able to find some areas where we could take water that runs down the gutter that landed on the roadway and find a way to filter it through these same bioswales right in the public right-of-way. The stormwater rain gardens themselves are not complex. There's a boilerplate design out there that is pretty simple. The challenge comes in adapting it to your site. You need excess right-of-way that isn't already in use for roadway, for parking, for pedestrian access. For all the different things that a public street does, you need a little extra space to now put another use in there. That's the challenge. And that space also has to dodge street lights, utility vaults, driveways. It's, it's the latecomer to a very complex system out there that most people take for granted. So shoehorning that into an existing system is the challenge. You can't block driveways. You have to allow for cars to park and still be able to get out of your parked car. You have to leave enough sidewalks so people can use the sidewalk. So those are the obvious things that when you stand out there you would quickly see, well, we need to find a place that will do that. But it's all the other functions of a street that people don't often recognize. The utilities that run along these street corridors, that's a very large secondary function of these streets, is to carry utilities. On this particular street, the utilities are buried underground. So they're even more out of sight, out of mind to people who don't understand all that. So we had to make sure we missed all those utilities, which we didn't necessarily do that. We thought we did and when we went to dig them up we found a large water line running right alongside of it and it's a very old water line in a delicate situation. We had to do a lot of hand work to work around it. So even our thorough planning and design failed us in that one aspect but we were able to modify the project. So really you had to be able to find adequate space that created a net benefit to everything and didn't impede anything. But when you look at all the signposts and the traffic signals and the street lights and trash cans, bus benches, bus stops, all the things that go on out there. It's a huge challenge to try and fit one more function in a highly functional system. You know, in some ways, though, the constraints became opportunities as well, because the specific reason we were doing this project was to model a retrofit. So we actually didn't see that as a problem, but more as an interesting challenge and demonstration opportunity. We will maintain them primarily as a landscape feature. 
And as landscaping goes, the plant varieties that we've put in there and the whole design of these systems are designed to be fairly low maintenance. We will be using very little water to irrigate these, if any, maybe a little bit up front to get them established. The plants are native plants. They like to live in this area and they have their own stability so they don't need to be trimmed and cut back too much. We will do a little around the edge because they're obviously right next to sidewalks and parked cars so we'll have to do a little trimming around the edge. Probably the biggest maintenance headache will be the urban trash that blows in and get that out of there but as the plants mature, I think even that will be minimized. So these really are a win-win situation that they're designed to be very low maintenance, low cost, virtually no consumption of water for a nice bit of greenery along the streetscape. One of the features of this project is to put a, an interpretive sign explaining what these things are. They're not just a little garden patch. These are hard-working elements of the environmental system we have out there. So to help to educate people. And uh, we found that that really does touch a lot of people. And in my particular town of El Cerrito, uh, the people who live here are very curious about these things, very astute, and I think will be well received. This project we did is, again, a demonstration project of sorts, is, is to demonstrate can it be done and, and how easily can it actually get implemented. But another aspect, um, which our partners in, in, the, in, the, in the project will be doing is to actually measure um, scientifically the benefits that we'll gain from this. And so we'll be conducting stormwater monitoring, taking samples both at the inlet for the water coming into the garden and then at the outlet so that we can infer a change or water quality improvement. For this particular project, we'll be monitoring for a certain suite of contaminants. Those include PCBs, pyrethroids, SSC, which is suspended sediment concentration, mercury, copper, and organic carbon. Our monitoring results will be written up in a technical report that will be provided to the State Water Board. It will also drive a lot of the educational and outreach materials that will be developed and distributed to the community. The whole industry is on a learning curve to find out how efficient these things really are. We all have high hopes that they'll work. This is actually a simplified version of a water treatment plant that's already been in place for a century in treating public water. This is just a simplified version to treat small amounts of stormwater. We're getting interest from other cities who want to learn about these to see if there's opportunities. Our partners in this project are obviously helping us to get the word out, but the word is moving by itself. Uh, to, to coin a phrase, it's almost gone viral um, it, within this industry. Even the mighty Caltrans, who runs all the highways in the state, has come to little old El Cerrito to ask questions and to learn about this. And as I thought about that and pondered that autonomy, they, they have a lot of roadways in town and they really are interested in learning how to manage all the water runoff of their roadways. So this is an excellent learning curve for them. It just, it just exemplifies the interest that this is getting with, with the whole uh, public sector who manages roadways. Through partnerships with the San Francisco Estuary Partnership and the Estuary Institute, um, as well as Caltrans and uh, the ultimate funders and the EPA. And um, I think that they end up being able to kind of use the project um, to help create a message that we might have on our own, you know, while we're kind of, I wouldn't say we're provincial, but, you know, our, our job is really to make sure that we're doing things within the city of El Cerrito and not always to get the message further out. And so I think the partnerships help that happen. We would certainly look at, at doing more, yes. I think the, the benefits are many fold and, uh, I think as we learn how to incorporate them into projects, the cost of building these things will actually come down and will be minimized. So yeah, I would look forward to doing more, and not just on commercial corridors, but other areas, other arterial streets, possibly even in neighborhoods as opportunities arise. I would say with the rain gardens, when we put them in, and the entire streetscape was potentially to create a better quality of life here, but to hope that it also, because of the highly visible site, that it really did kind of start to um, disperse into other places. And as we understand the benefits from these, that they're really actually very important to build into our streetscapes as we go forward.